Today's challenge, an 18-week-old puppy. In your bed, lay down. Whose refusal to sleep on his own. I will keep sleeping down here with him. And fear of walking outside. Come on, Shaq, come on. Is proving overwhelming for his new family. It's not bedtime routines and bathing and feeding and who's picking up the dog food. Come on, Shaq. Who's going to attempt to walk in today? Shaq, come on. It's like having a child. And he just is becoming really needy. In Kent, Gemma lives with her son's 12-year-old Albert, 7-year-old Sydney, and a very recent addition, pocket bulldog puppy, Shaq. We've never had a dog in the family. It was a huge, huge decision to, to take on. Shaq is just 18 weeks old. He's just so lovable. He's a big softy. Can you give me kisses? And just like any baby, this bundle of fur needs lots of attention. He's really needy. He cries a lot if he doesn't get his own way. If he doesn't get let upstairs or on the sofa, he will cry. He cries more than he barks. And at night, in a bid to stop the crying before it begins, Gemma's eldest, Albert, volunteers for babysitting duty. My son has now decided that he'd rather move downstairs and sleep on the sofa with him. This is ridiculous. It can't go on any longer. He has to go back in his own room and leave the dog to be. This pampered puppy loves his new home so much, he doesn't want to leave it. It's a complete mystery as to why he won't walk. Come on. And is terrified of everything outside. He's scared of cars, people, objects, anything that moves. Come on, come on, come on, Shaq. Which is making busy mum Gemma's life extremely stressful. We start off like this, just not wanting to move because he knows he's outside. I don't have the time in my day to keep trying to walk this dog that doesn't want to be walked. That's as far as he is happy to go. We've tried everything we can. We're at a loss. He's getting his own way in more ways than one, and this is ridiculous. Enough is enough. Thankfully, dog expert Victoria Stilwell is on her way. I'm off to Kent to visit a family that have just got a new bulldog puppy called Shaq. Now, puppies require a lot of care attention and guidance. And because the family have never had a dog before, I think they're finding Shaq a bit of a handful. Shaq is a pocket bulldog, a miniature version of his bigger cousin, the American Bulldog. Standing at 60 centimeters, the American Bulldog is nearly twice the size of the pocket bully, but they share similar characteristics. Pocket Bulldogs are known for being playful, energetic, and can be protective of their families. Early socialization is important to help them feel confident around people as they grow. Hello. Hello Hi. Victoria, come in. Go Thank through. You. Wow. He is just gorgeous. Tell me about your puppy. So he's fairly new to us. We've not long had him three weeks. We brought him home and we are all in awe of him. But he does have a few little problems that we're hoping you can help us with. OK, and what are those? My son is tending to sleep downstairs with him of a night. Um, he cries quite a lot and they've become very addicted to wanting to not leave him alone. And in addition, he doesn't like to go out. It takes so long that I'm the only one really putting the efforts in. So I see. I've sort of give up with it. Mm. And when he gets out, it's almost like he's so frightened of every noise, it fr he freezes. All right, well, he seems to be having a lovely time down here with his chew. I might just, like, get down on the ground and just say hello. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> hello. Oh, my God, you be still, my beating heart. So do you have any footage of night time? I do. This is my oldest son, Albert. OK. <laughs> Most puppies can be anxious in their new home and prefer to be with people even at night. Well, thank you for showing me that and um, tell you that to have him here three weeks is quite short time still. But we'll see where he sleeps, his bed, 
and like where you are and see if we can kind of make that situation a bit easier. Why don't we go out for a walk? Yeah, okay. sounds good. Right. Now Victoria wants to see how Shaq behaves on his walk, but Shaq isn't so sure. Come on. Come on, Shaq. Come on. It's okay, come on. Come on. Come on, Shaq. Good boy. It's a slow start. Come on. Come on. It's very resistant. Come on. Doesn't really uh, feel comfortable. But suddenly, Shaq picks up the pace. This is our back gate. And this is what happens every time one, he just wants to give up and go in. He's okay. like, I know I live there, let me in. And it's really frustrating because now I'll have a, an issue where I've got to try and pull him away from this gate. And right. I really don't want to do that. And I just yeah. end up giving up and going in. It's not fluid. That's right. No, it's not. It's not like you have this kind of idea of going out for a walk with your dog. And, but you have a dog that's kind of flailing around yes. and it's not that eager to be outside, so it doesn't sort of fulfill your kind of idea. No, absolutely. Oh. That's absolutely correct. Okay, all right. So how would you entice him back with you? I just have to encourage him and just, just hope that he walks. Otherwise, sometimes I have to pick him up. And if I'm honest, he's, he's quite heavy. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to pick him up for. I mean, he's going to grow very quickly and then that's it, all bets are off. Yeah. All right, okay, well, I see your issue, so we can we can take him home if, if we can get him going. Okay, come on, okay. Chuck. With Shaq happy to be back home, Victoria lets Gemma into some puppy-owning secrets. When new dogs come into our homes, they're going through a hell of a transition. People are also going through a massive transition to. Because you essentially are now responsible for this other life. You have this puppy that looks to you for everything and really can't fend for itself. You don't need to take him for long walks, and in fact, you shouldn't. That will come later, but he's too little. Okay. I'm gonna show you what to do. Like, a dog goes past, or if a person goes past, or if they're like, to gain his confidence most important thing for puppies. I mean, I've never had a dog, so this is all really new to me. And it's new to him, so, you know, it's... Yeah. Taking your advice is probably the best thing I can do yeah. to help us all. Your son is doing an amazing thing. Dogs are social animals, they don't do well by themselves. He wants to be with everybody. But how does he transition from doing that to getting back upstairs again? That's what we'll work on. OK. OK? Thank you. I feel guilty that we do call him a bad dog because, in all honesty, she's right. He's only learning, he's only a baby, and maybe I shouldn't be so hard on him and I need to maybe just realise that he's only behaving and he's not a bad dog. He's actually quite a good puppy. Before Shaq's training begins, Victoria's got a lesson for his older brothers. I want to give you a little window into Shaq's world. Do you let him on the sofa sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes. Does your mum not want him on the sofa? No, she doesn't want him on the sofa. Do you break the rules sometimes? Yeah. See these sun loungers here? I want you to... Albert, you lie on that one. And Sydney, you lie on that one. I'm going to allow you to lie on those sun loungers, right? Yeah. Actually, I've changed my mind. I don't want you to lie down. So get up. That's Okay, all right. Oh no, I've changed my mind. You can go, you can go lie down again. <laughs> no, actually, what are you doing? Get up! <laughs> what have I been doing? Like changing your decision. Are you confused? Yeah, are you confused? Yeah. Do you think Shaq's confused? Yeah. So you as a family, and this is your homework, have to come up for rules for what Shaq's allowed to do and what he's not allowed to do. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Fantastic. I think he's just getting a little bit muddled up with what we're saying. I think we have to put some boundaries in place, like what he can't do and what he can. In Kent, Victoria is helping Gemma and her sons train their new puppy, Shaq. Now she wants to address their biggest issue, getting Shaq to sleep by himself and Albert back in his room. 
Albert, I have to say I'm extremely impressed with you. The fact that you didn't want him to be by himself, yeah. recognised your dog's needs. He's a little baby. Yeah. However, there is going to be some point where he's going to need to learn to sleep by yeah. himself, just like a human baby, right? I think now you've got a routine, don't you? Yeah. What time do you normally go to bed then? Eight, nine. Would like you to spend another couple of nights down here with him. The next time you come down, let's say the third night, come down with your duvet, go through your whole routine, wait till he's asleep, and then leave your duvet down here and your pillow and go back upstairs. So if he wakes up, there's still a visual of the duvet there. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Then gradually you can start to make that duvet disappear. One day you won't need it. Do you think you'll be able to do that? Yeah. Okay. I've got something that I've got outside which I'm going to bring in. And let's see if he likes it. So, oh, wow. Wow. we do have a Shax <laughs> dial bed, which we hope he doesn't chew on. Shax outgrown his first bed, so this larger bed will be better suited as he'll be getting bigger in the coming weeks. <laughs> he can sleep much better. <laughs> Cover it with his blanket. He's used to his blanket. There you go. <laughs> So I'm going to put this away now. When it's bedtime and he's exhausted, you put that down, put his blanket on top of it. He'll go in it, sleep all night, in the morning, pick it up, done. And he just does his normal stuff, OK? Next, before they step outside the security of the garden, Victoria wants to make sure Shaq knows one crucial piece of information. I notice outside that I don't know if he really knows his name yet. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be that reactive no. to his name. So, I want to help him with that. Okay. Do this game in the garden where you move around, you throw the treat, you go, Shaq! Yes. Throw the treat, then move somewhere else. Over here. Let him explore. Shaq! Yes. Shaq! Yes. Right. You see how he's doing it now? Yeah. Right now you're working on attention. So when you say his name, boom, he looks at you. And that's going to help you out on a walk too. So now you're going to take over. OK. Puppies are fast learners and with clear guidance can recognise their names very quickly. Shaq! Move around, move behind him. Call him. Shaq! This exercise is teaching Shaq to pay attention every time Gemma or the family calls his name, which will be really useful when it comes to teaching him other commands. Yes, good boy. Shaq! Yes. Only are we now associating his name with turning to look at you, but we can start to put distance. What are we building up? A recall. Yeah, a recall. Right? You go slow with this. And I want your family to do the same as well, actually, yeah. so that he responds to when they say his name too. And that really is name recognition. Yeah. Then he'll understand, oh, when I hear that noise, that means I have to look at the person that's saying it. Thank you. You are so good. You see, you're smart. You're very smart. Exceedingly handsome. The next part of Shaq's walking training starts right at their doorstep. We haven't got very far. <laughs> we just came out of your front door and you've got this lovely patch of grass in front, so we're going to use it. Because even just by sitting here on your front lawn, he's experiencing this world outside. Because when dogs are gathering information up through their nose, it's called seeking. And this seeking behaviour is really important for releasing great chemicals, including dopamine, into the brain. Dopamine makes you feel good. But actually coming out of your front door, sitting here right close to your house, just with you, for five minutes even, so we can have a sniff. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Gemma's front garden is also the perfect spot for getting Shaq used to all the sights and sounds of the outside world. Let's say we're sitting here and some child comes walking by. What I would do is I would let him see the child and then I would go, good, and I would give him a treat. 
I don't want him to look at the child and go, <gasps> or cars, or bikes, or anything. I want him to look at them and go, oh, that means I'm going to get good things. Here we have somebody walking past. Let's see if he notices him. Get ready to say. Good. Nice. These rapidly developing information sponges grow much faster than humans and can form lifelong habits and behaviors by the age of just 18 weeks. For this reason, it's important to socialize your puppy early by creating a positive association with different people, objects, and animals in their environment. So I'd like you to do this five minutes a day. Yeah. That's all you need to do, right? Easy, simple. It's so simple, but it's just building his confidence so quickly. Yeah. For her last training session, Victoria wants to encourage Shaq to walk by building on his natural curiosity to sniff and explore his surroundings. He's going to do what I call a dog-led sniffy walk. Hi. There's a long line on him. And then I am going to follow. So if you come with me. Okay. This gives the dog confidence. And then I follow behind my dog and I let him sniff. Look at that confidence. That's amazing. Having the control still with the long lead is yeah. exactly what we need. You have him safe because he's on a long line. This is giving him confidence and he can explore his world. Yeah. Oh, that's just going to make him feel so much better about being outside. So now I want you to follow him, give him that nice long lead so that he can now experience. And when you're done, come next to him and then reattach your other lead. Tell him, good boy. Good boy. Time. Good boy. Yeah, lovely. And we'll walk him home. And that's all you need to do. Before Victoria leaves, there's time for one final pep talk. I have to say it's been a real hardship working with your puppy today. He's gorgeous. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have the most amazing dog. How have you found today? Like, it, it, has it cleared up a few things? Oh, most definitely. It has been really, really good for me, and, and the boys as well. But re for me, the simplest things are going to make the bigger difference, and I really can't wait to put it into place. So thank, thank you. you very much. Do your homework, and I'll be checking in Absolutely. on you, all right? We will. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You take care. Bye bye. OK, bye. See you. It's been amazing. It really has been an eye-opener how the simplest of things can make such a big difference. Things that you wouldn't even consider. Um, and I really am looking forward to just putting all of these things into place and, and having a, a, a happy pup. In the weeks following Victoria's visit, the training pays off. Shaq grows in confidence on his walks, Gemma's starting on his recall training, and Shaq's loving his new bed. A few weeks later, Victoria's keen to check in on Shaq's progress. Hey Gemma, how are you? Hello Victoria, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So tell me, at any point was the training difficult? For me, it was like everybody has to be on board of doing all of this. Everybody has to be doing the same thing. And everybody was, and it did actually pull off. So I was really, really pleased that everybody listened to Victoria. Is Shaq sleeping by himself now? We've cracked it. We have. Thank you very much for your help. It's, it's so nice to just go up and have not to worry that he's crying or he's scared and everyone's in their own beds and everyone's getting a good sleep. Okay, that's really good to hear. Now tell me about the walking. How's that going? I enjoy walking him. I look forward to making that part of my routine for work, you know, taking him over to the field and, and actually exercising with a dog that wants to participate with you. It's, it's so much nicer and his, his tail's wagging and he's sniffing about and he knows he's going to come home and then he just sleeps, so which is like a baby. Jack is staying. He is, he's staying. <laughs> I'm really impressed with the work that Gemma and her family have put in. Puppies take a lot of time and effort to raise, but if you put the effort in on the front end, you reap the benefits later. Shaq is a truly wonderful family dog. 
Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.